Is it different this time? Let's find out. Let's go back to 2012. In 2012, friends, there was Bitcoin price here and it started having its first Bitcoin halvening. And when it started it was November 2012, narratives appeared as Bitcoin's price went up. So Bitcoin, friends, we've got a lot to uncover here. Bitcoin, it started the year, here we go, 2012. It started around, you know, five, six, seven, ten dollars started going up. And it finally went to a hundred bucks. Now, as you can imagine, that excitement made everybody really, really energetic. Crypto! But the narratives that were around, they are different to what they are today. So back then, that 2012, the narrative that appeared, friends, was proof of work. So you see, shout out to Bankless, Davy Soy Hoffman. He actually said it was interesting because he, he knows a lot of OGs who are around there. And what they said was they had Bitcoin, right? And Bitcoin, I think, was like a billion market cap, whatever it was back then, which is funny, one billion. And then someone decided, go, interesting, if, if Bitcoin has a billion market cap, I wonder what happens if we, like, fork it. And they did. They made Litecoin. And, you know, there were some other, these other little colored coins, all these other, like, peer coin, whatever the hell they were. It's just these, like, experiments at the start, right? Uh, one of them, Vitalik, worked on, Lord of Vitalik. So they did that, and what they discovered was shocking. So they discovered that when they forked like Bitcoin, they had Litecoin, it had an $80 million market cap. Now you're thinking, $80 million is not much. No, no, no. Back then, that was, whoa. Everyone was like, what is this discovery? We've just minted money out of thin air. Why does this have $80 million market cap? And Bitcoin didn't go down. It's staying up. Whoa. See how mind, everyone's minds blew up? But the narrative, friends, was proof of work. So they, they believed that the narrative of proof of work was such a great discovery because that's what Bitcoin is, right? Bitcoin, that was, Bitcoin proof of work is the discovery, friends, of, of Bitcoin, the blockchain, okay? That, is, that was the invention. The invention was you can do an activity to get a share of a network of real estate. Right. It's literally, it's like if the government opened up land and it paid you in blocks of land. You get to own like, you know, square meters of the land, but you, you have to like maybe work in the coal mines or whatever. Okay, but we could do this digitally all around the world, you see? And Litecoin and everything exploded. And I'll show it to you right here. So this is the earliest chart data for Litecoin. Okay, here it is, like April 2013. You see that? So the Bitcoin halvening year appears and we're starting to move a year on, but this is wild, right? So Litecoin just goes absolutely bonkers. Bang, and everyone's mining it for free, right? So it does like a 25X in a month. Just showing you the explosive actions of uh, of what happens, right? But that narrative, friends, it gripped everybody because during also that 2013 year, as Litecoin, everything's going up, you had Cyprus. Remember Cyprus did the bank clawback? It took everyone's money. It took like, um, if you had a, if you had anything more than a hundred thousand dollars, it took everything over a hundred grand. So there, there was unfortunately there was one guy from Australia, poor guy, man. He worked his whole life, and he had I think he saved up like four hundred thousand dollars. His his whole life saved up four hundred thousand dollars, and he was retired in Cyprus. He was living off it there, and his money got taken by the bank, and he was only left with like a hundred thousand dollars or one hundred twenty thousand, I think. So that's enormous. Imagine, man, you just lost seventy five percent of your life savings because of the clawback, man. Right, very sad. I think it was like an old Greek guy or something. So just showing you the narrative that appeared. But what happens after that? Well, we have the bear market, and then we move on to the next season, friends. See, so remember this proof of work, POW narrative that appeared in everyone's mind. See, proof of work here. Now let's move on to 2016. So the next cycle appears, okay? The next cycle appears, and I'll show it to you now. We have, you know, we're moving up here. Now we move into 2016. Now in 2016, friends, we stand there. And we look at the scope, right? Let's check out what's happening here. New narratives appeared. So we still had proof of work, but now it's aging as a narrative. That was now an old, ancient thing. Not so ancient, just old. That was a 2012, 2013 thing. Now we're in 2016. It's been a couple of years now. What takes over, friends? Well, what takes over is payment solutions. So payments became big. Bitcoin, the better payment network. Uh, Ethereum, the, the new payment network. Remember, Ethereum was smart contracts that you could pay people for access to their project. Whoa. XRP was you can pay people for Western Union stuff, right? So maybe like you send money to the Philippines, you don't have to charge 10, get charged $10 every time you want to send 
fifty dollars or whatever. Okay, so people were using Ethereum, XRP, and other chains for speculating on global payment standards, and that's why you had stuff like Tron appear as well. And they were all doing partnerships, friends. You remember there was all these fake. There was this fake uh, McDonald's partnerships and just like, oh, we have a partnership with Pornhub because they wanted, everyone wants to use payments because people didn't know, like they were excited for crypto, but they just didn't know what it's going to be used for. Like, oh, I guess we pay with stuff, right? Now, it's funny. They got it all wrong. Well, kind of. We do pay with stuff in crypto, but we don't pay for normy stuff. In crypto, it's a network. There are payments needed, but we're putting stuff on the chain to buy. Okay, so we're putting, we're putting, for example, meme coins, bull market speculation vehicles we can buy, decentralized exchange. Do you see that? We're not actually going to the grocery store paying for milk with it. But the market, it didn't go that way. It could have, but it didn't. Okay, because I guess this is bigger than just like, oh, you can buy milk with another currency, right? Because that's actually bearish, friends. You want, you want to hold something that goes up, right? It wants, you want to grow the network value for yourself. If, you just, if you're paying for something in a currency, you're bearish on it. You're dumping it. For example, you get paid in your US dollar, for example. Yeah, you go buy stuff with it. You're bearish on the dollar. You got to buy that item. You see? Now, <clears throat> step back, right? Again, you're in 2016. Ethereum's come out. Payment solutions are big. You absolutely murdered proof of work, guys. Okay? You absolutely murdered them. And no, obviously not my opinion, but I can show you all the evidence here. So you can even look at XRP, friends. XRP on the log chart, this is what it'll do. You don't even have to measure it from here. Let's measure it from here. XRP does a 596X. So this is the 2016 cycle. You see that? And then it goes, bang, 596X. Pretty much a 600X. Can you imagine that? And then <coughs> Ethereum, friends, was also enormous. <clears throat> what did Ethereum do? Man, Ethereum from its ICO, my gosh. Ethereum goes up and does, it's a, what is that, 4,000X? Yes, it actually is around that. Wow, that's 429,000%. Is that that's ridiculous? Man, yeah, 4,000 4, X pretty much, you know? So you go from, from 32 cents up to 1,400 bucks. Yeah, it's about four, 5,000 X. So you can see these payment solutions, big. You know, Tron does 100 X, Cardanzo. So interesting. But once again, I've got to remind you again, as they appeared, the older stuff, you missed out, okay? But now we move on again to 2020. Okay, in 2020, we have even more narratives appear. This was our recent one, friends. What appears in 2020? We have Uniswap, which is decentralized trading. We have Chainlink, which is DeFi infrastructure. Then you have gaming, NFTs, metaverse, alternative layer ones, dog coins. So more narratives appear. But there's that same pattern appears again. In 2020... The XRP stuff and all those other things, even Ethereum, you got way less returns. You, you missed out on a big chunk of what was possible out there. Like four years ago, Ethereum was 350 bucks. You end up getting around the 10x from this point. Okay, but Luna does like a 400x. Many other coins do a 50 to a 200x. So getting 10 on Ethereum, it, it's garbage pretty much. But it was great because it's safe, right? People didn't even think it was safe back then, by the way. But you get the point, right? So last cycle, friends, if you held on to the 2016, 2017 coins, such as XRP, XLM, XMR, Tron, or others, you mostly got wrecked, all right? There were some ones that did okay, and we, we focused on them, but really we like, it, it's not nice to just focus on the unicorn winners, right? So Ethereum, Cardanzo, and Doge, they did well, but there's like a list of 30 to 50 that didn't. They were like the forgotten ones. They, you know, Monero and, and Zcash and all these just down only. Some of them did kind of okay, but they just got wrecked. Pretty much wrecked. Like you missed everything. So we've seen a common pattern here. The common pattern is in each Bitcoin halvening year, the narrative that appears new in each of those years is to be taken seriously. It is to be taken with a lot of passion and energy. And you've got to study it if you want to succeed in the cycle. That was the common pattern. Here we are today, though, in 2024. What appears in 2024? We have, right, we have real-world assets, decentralized penises, D-PIN, AI, artificial intelligence, and memes. Now, you all know memes are big. Now, there's actually another one here, which, friends, it's such an abomination. I don't even want to write it down. They're actually layer two coins, okay? Layer two coins. So, actually, it actually looks like a one, but Layer two coins, they are another invention. Restaking, layer two, all this garbage. The problem is the VCs own 95% of the coins. 
They are so greedy, they own all the coins that, okay, you're an invention. I can't participate in you anyway. You've kept everything for yourself. All right. So in 2024, our main narrative, it seems to be meme coins. It seems, okay. But all those things actually appeared and they popped off. They all did. Meme coins did 14x. Real world assets did 3x. DPN and AI did around the 2 to 3x max. See, but compare 14 to the rest of them. It's not even close, okay? But right now, we're seeing a big disconnect. So people in crypto right now, friends, most, they're falling into the trap of every other cycle. Okay, so you remember in 2016, the 2012 maxis missed out, mo um, the biggest chunk of the gains. In 2020, the 2016 guys now missed out. Now we're in 2024. If it repeats again, the 2020 maxis are going to miss out. What are the 2020 coins? Gaming, Metaverse, NFT, alt layer ones, the overwhelming majority of them. Okay, even dog coins. Now, you might say, but dog with hat is a dog coin. Yeah, but it's a new coin. <laughs> it's new. So more like Doge and SHIB, they probably, they're, they're going to have diminished returns. They're enormous, man. They're literally enormous in size. They're going to be diminished, right? You're not going to get your 100x in them, but I guess it'll do okay. I hope they I hope they do really well. But you get to see what's happening. Now, uh, Do Doge and SHIB have been replaced with like Peppy and Dog with Hat and all other new memes that have appeared, right? So that's our fourth cycle. That's what it looks like, right? Here we are today. We're seeing these, these new things appear. Now, you know, the funny part is everything I've told you is 100% fact. I didn't make any of it up. This is all written in here. So if it turns out meme coins recover hard as Bitcoin breaks 100K or whatever and everything goes up, no one's got any excuses. Like we have all the information here. Now, if it doesn't work out, okay, well, I guess this time was different. Okay, but if they do work out, like, oh, wow, it was written in the stars? No, it was written in the charts. It's happened before, right? Now, it gets controversial because on what, the, well, who do you trust, right? Do you trust your own bias that meme coins are gambling? Or do you trust the data and the charts? They're, two, they're saying two different things. This is where the split in the whole crypto industry is. On one hand, meme coins... They don't add any technology. They're just pictures and logos and communities. They are that on the surface. They don't add any new tech. So inherently, people will say they are gambling tools. They're just for gambling and they're garbage. And they're, they are end of time stuff. So they will say that on one hand. Kind of true, or is it? Maybe meme coins aren't gambling tools. Maybe they're just a bull market speculation vehicle like everything else is in crypto. And maybe they have a lot of participants because they're easy to understand. Plus, no one knows how to code, but everybody knows how to like join a telegram and start shilling a coin and making memes about it. Maybe it's more enjoyable, right? I'm just trying to open your mind here. Right, remember I said on the other hand, so remember your, people's bias? What are people bias? People's bias is, well, you know, you're all gambling and stuff. There's all a bunch of junk and everything else out here. Okay, yeah. Let me tell you this though. You go back to each cycle, man. You know, in 2016, friends, XRP, Ethereum, what do you think the proof of work maxis were saying? Charlie Lee, Litecoin founder, all the Bitcoin guys were saying that Ethereum is a bunch of gambling degen casino things. So is Ethereum. It's like a mother a mothership of garbage. And so is XRP. Well, guess what? They might have been right, except XRP still does a 600x and Ethereum still does thousands of x's. Okay. So yeah, you might be right about your theory, but we're here to make money. Now, roll that forward again, friends. What were what were people saying in 2020, friends? In 2020, Tron guys, um, it, all of the older coins, Tron, XRP, even Ethereum guys were saying, all you new stuff, you're all junk. What ends up happening though? People buy gaming, metaverse, NFT, JPEGs, alternative layer ones. You see? So once again, the maxis of that old narrative miss out. So... They're doing it again. It's literally happening all over again. Who are the biggest critics of meme coins, friends? It's all the 2020 narrative believers. Gaming people and metaverse people hate meme coins. Why? Because they go, man, we at least have a product. You're just a meme. Basically, what they're saying is 
they are 800 million market cap and and retail should buy their stuff to buy to play a game for like 14 days before you get sick of it right that's what they're basically saying and the market's saying you know what man you're too expensive we don't want to touch you you're not excited enough man you see DeFi people, very obvious one. What all the DeFi people, the Aave, the, 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 the yield seekers, the liquidity funds, what do they all say? Meme coins are scams. Of course they're going to say that, but your coins are down too. And no one's coming in to buy your stuff because you got in early. You're not exciting the new wave of people. Now, maybe you should be exciting those people. Uh, it's not up to me, man, friends. I'm just here to report what's going on. I'm here to observe what's going on. Well, like I'm watching, okay. You know, the traffic light. It's now green. Go. It's now red. Stop. We're just. It's. You see what I mean? We're just reporting on that. We don't. I don't. I'm not. I don't know what the future holds, but I'm just showing you what's been happening so far. So, the, the, you, you get to see it now, point. Let's play some pump music as well for everyone because I understand these truths, friends. It's not. I don't wake up saying, "Wow, well, I don't have the answer." No, I don't wake up like that. I look around. I'm like, well. I would have thought DeFi, I didn't know DeFi was going to be this garbage four years later. I thought DeFi was a real big case. Now Vitalik's even freaking shady, <laughs> shaming DeFi, right? DeFi is fine. But I'm just telling you, you need retailers to come and get excited, bro. You need users. We need, you need people to actually want it. Okay. Right. Now you see, so you see the common pattern, right? Every old cycler who shits on the new thing, history doesn't look good for them. So now I ask you, do you want to take the other side of this bet though? Do you really want to? Like you can, that's fine. I just don't want to. I think it would be very unwise to not have at least some exposure for like to keep playing uh, the same way that history has been repeating so far. I think you got to have something. I don't know how much you just decide, not financial advice. For some people, it's 0.01%. Could be $1. Just get off zero, man. Get off zero. Because what if it repeats again? It's, what if it repeats again? What if it turns out 2024 was not the cycle top? What if 2024 meme coins, it was not pure gambling? What if people just don't understand what's going on yet and they only figure it out next year? What if? What if companies, friends, this is this is interesting. What if a company starts buying a meme coin to get the advertising and the market share from their competitors? Other, other companies to be cool and hip with the new people. You know, if I had a business, friends, if I had a, like I said, I had a business out here, it'd be so easy to go buy a meme coin and like just insert yourself in the community and say, hey, I like this meme. And you basically, all these customers, you're like, you get, you're getting all the attention from everyone in the meme. Everyone, you see? Like imagine, I don't know, a lawnmower company puts a little dick with butt. I'm just giving you examples here of what the future might might hold. Remember, they did it with Doge. Friends, they put Doge in the stadiums. Remember Mark Cuban? One of the stadiums you can pay with Doge. Do you see that? You see how the, the future is going to... Friends, they're just communities, man. I'll give you an example. Facebook. Remember Facebook? Man? Facebook is literally just a bunch of college, kid, college kids who want to bang each other. That's all it is. And they just want to meet and talk to each other. There was no business on Facebook. There was nothing. It was just people wanted to join. All the retailers joined, then the businesses come on top of it later. That's what's happening with crypto. But we got to make the people join first. That's the hard part. That's the product market fit that everybody's seeking. So now, baby dolls, there's always the devil's advocate on the other side, right? And that's why I like, even show you the pump fund dilemma, All right, So pump fund, friends, yeah. Pump fund is just JPEG swapping. So I here's my post, right? I say pump fund is for drug addicts, not meme coin communities, which is true. And I said, if Pump Fun is for meme coins, if it was really for meme coin communities, then the strip club is for finding a wife to make a family. Right? So it's a stretch. It's a stretch. Once in a while, yeah, she's a good one. She shouldn't be here. Once in a while, friends. You know, most of them should be in there. <laughs> most of them should be in there. So trading JPEGs with a one-day lifespan and then getting rugged 99,000 times, it's literally, friends, literally, it's 0.14% win rate. It's literally basically 0% win rate. Um, it's a complete opposite of what a community is. That's not a community or a family. That's what meme coins, culture, is altcoins. Friends, meme coins are just altcoins in crypto. It's just, we're just giving them different name. It's, it's, just, it's literally the new altcoins, okay? Every single cycle is a new altcoins, right? Also, shout out to this guy. It's actually shocking me this kind. Mr. Sub-Zero Fooks Given. Pulse chain memes are the memes you take home to your mother and they happily cook you a roast dinner in perfect, un perfect unison. You and your dad just share a smile and a glass of orange juice with perfectly straight back posture. Sir, that was so well written. Are you an AI? 
That was actually amazing. All right. That was actually amazing. Shout out to also Jerry. Some say Gary. Let's make a meme coin golden again. Thank you, Gary. You're so cute, bro. You're so innocent. You're like this. It's always these friends. You can just tell when people are just like really innocent and nice and gentle and pleasant to the internet. <laughs> so you got to make that distinction, right? But then let's go back to the hindsight stuff. If it turns out that history is going to repeat again and this time is not different, if it turns out, right, every single cycle, new thing, well, what would the hindsight analysis look like in 2026 when we look back? What is the hindsight analysis going to look like? And I'm actually going to read for you this post I have here. Look at this. Most people do not know how to build code but they do know how to make memes and promote things to their friends. So it's only natural that more people will be coming into crypto for more normy things like memes. In hindsight, this will sound very obvious. Sounds obvious to me, like because I'm thinking about that world. Now, here's the thing. If memes don't continue, I want you to think about what that world looks like. See, this is, this is the trap that everyone gets into. If, let's say memes don't work. People then conclude if memes don't work, their one out of 100 sectors is going to be the one that pumps. There's the gaming guy, the metaverse guy, the phantom guy, the Corridanzo guy, the layer two guy, the restaking guy, okay? The DeFi guy, the Aave guy, whatever these. Everyone thinks when memes fail, they win. But history has zero, I repeat, friends, zero precedence for that. Instead, when the narrative moves on, it's onto something entirely new. It's a whole new subset of tokens, which means you're not exposed to it anyway, which means you have to allocate in anyway, which means, it means friends, you have like a, an option here. Okay, it's kind of like you can barbell yourself. You go, well, if memes continue, at least I'm positioned mentally and everything for that. And if they don't, I am now ready to jump into the new thing, the new Uniswap level of stuff, right? Unless you believe once again, no, this time is going to be different than everything else ever. People are going to come back to my own, own old narrative. Good luck to that, man. I say good luck to that because you're taking a very, very, very big bet there. And I know it's people don't want to leave. We have a lot of biases, but you've learned something, friends, today. You get to see that the only way to make it, man, I've, I've, I'll go back in time, friends. I go back in time and I, I stood in every single cycle. I wasn't there. I went down and researched every single part of it. I go, oh, wow. How did these people win? Oh, they're in the new thing. Okay, how did these people lose? Oh, they're in the old thing. And then I went back and I saw, what were they saying to each other? The new guys are like, I don't know, these things going up, it's fun, okay? They said it in 2016, they said it in 2020, they said it in 2024 about memes, okay? And what are the old people are saying? Every time in each cycle, the old people narrative was saying, you're a scam, you're new, you're unsustainable. We are the proper narrative. You're the fake narrative. You're the new thing. You're gambling. You're the end of time signal. Every time. I wonder if it will play out again. Do you think it will? Make sure you like, subscribe, bell button, or catch you in the next one.